Um, so guys, just to clarify, you can all hear and hear me OK and you can see my slides OK on the screen, yeah? Yes, Jimmy, thank yep. you. Great. Um, will I start so? Are you OK, uh, Bridget, to start recording? Perfect. Yes. Recording started. Thank you. Great. So good morning, everyone. My name is Jimmy. I'm going to talk about interprofessional education at the Intermediate Care Facility. I'm going to tell you about how UL Allied Health students engage in internationally recommended interprofessional education at the on-campus intermediate care facility. So I've condensed the information down for this talk and I hope this conversation will spark some interest for you. It follows on on a couple of points that Arlene just made in uh, the previous presentation. So what will we be looking at this morning? So the focus of the presentation, I'm going to provide a short background on interprofessional education or IPE as it's referred to. Um, I'm going to tell you about the context uh, for IP at the moment and also the context for the intermediate care facility, which you can see on the screen at the moment in that slide. Um, I'll talk about the planning involved in developing these IP opportunities at the ICF, how we establish an active learning environment and how this then resulted in inspirations in learning and teaching. Um, so very briefly, a little bit about myself. I'm a qualified physiotherapist for over nine years. These are some of the organisations that I've worked in, St. Joseph's Foundation, University Hospital Limerick, West Limerick Children's Services. Um, in January 2020, I started in the role of interprofessional practice tutor at the School of Allied Health in UL. Um, this is the first role of its kind in Irish higher education institutions. Um, and my role involves developing sustainable practice-based interprofessional education and facilitating practice-based interprofessional education. So interprofessional education, IP, it can happen in the classroom or in the clinical setting for health students. So my focus is on supporting this IP in the clinical setting. So what is IPE? So in 2010, the World Health Organization identified that interprofessional education is an innovative strategy that can mitigate against the global health workforce crisis. So what this means is that worldwide, there's a shortage of healthcare workers and policymakers need strategies that can bolster the health workforce. Um, and IP was identified as one such strategy. So the definition for this, uh, for IP, it occurs when students from two or more professions learn about, from and with each other to enable effective collaboration and to improve health outcomes. So IP, is a necessary step in preparing a collaborative practice ready health workforce that's better prepared to respond to local healthcare needs. Um, what do we mean by a collaborative practice ready health worker? Basically, this is someone, uh, a healthcare worker who has the skills needed to work in an interprofessional team and is competent to do so. Publication of this guidance from the World Health Organization has placed an onus on universities to extend IP in their healthcare degree programs. Uh, just to consolidate, I suppose, your understanding uh, of IPE, I have a visual here. And this image illustrates that health systems are struggling to manage health needs. By introducing interprofessional education, we can allow students to leave college with the skills to work in healthcare teams, in healthcare teams, sorry. So this is a key step in moving health si systems from a position of fragmentation to one of strength and improved health outcomes. So our next question for this morning then, is what is collaborative practice? So briefly, collaborative practice occurs when health workers from different backgrounds work together with patients, families and communities to deliver the highest quality of care. So the Bristol inquiry you might you could well be familiar with, this provided a high profile example of when of failure in collaborative practice. So this inquiry found that poor teamwork between health professionals was associated with a flawed system of care and tragic outcomes for children that were undergoing heart surgeries. So the report that followed the Bristol inquiry stated that hospital culture must change from a club culture to one in which where to one in which collaborative teamwork is prized. Um, a redesign of professional health education um, to embrace this joint learning between professions and to move away from traditionally segregated university curricula was also reported in a, in the Lancet journal in an interesting article by Frank in 2010. So the Slauncha Care Action Plan, which is Ireland's roadmap for health and social care professions in 2019, identified team-based working and the evolution of interdisciplinary care models and teams as a focus for the future. 
So looking at the national and international context for IPE, so IPE is a feature of the UL School of Allied Health. Um, it's evidenced in teaching, practice, education, placements and research. And in 2018, the School of Allied Health won a Delta Award for IPE. Uh, the school is also leading Irish higher education institutions in implementing practice-based IP. And it's significant to say that implementation of this practice-based IP is limited worldwide. Um, the UL at 50 strategic plan also has a focus on interdisciplinary learning um, as objectives to meet university priorities of an excellent student experience and broadening research programmes. Um, and interestingly, in the context of this talk this morning, innovative collaboration between UL and the UL Hospitals Group led to the development of the ICF um, on campus and a unique interprofessional education opportunity. So let's talk about the ICF. So here you can see the ICF. So the ICF, the Intermediate Care Facility, was open on the 8th of June. Um, it was open in the university sports arena. You can see here the basketball uh, scoreboard overhead, the running track around. Um, so it's a fully staffed 68 bed hospital facility. So the ICF care team was made up of U UL Hospitals Group and UL staff. So the hospital group staff included medical staff, health and social care professionals, nursing staff, support staff, UL practice tutors, uh, UL allied health students, and then UL nursing and medicine students that worked as healthcare attendants. Um, so the ICF was developed in response to the COVID-19 pandemic um, to overcome crowding challenges in region hospitals and to improve patient flow. Um, 32 allied health students engaged in practice-based IP in the five months that it was open. So the ICF closed in October 2020 after seeing 188 patients. So practice-based IP then is when students from two or more disciplines learn and work at the same site. And the research shows that this practice-based IP, it allows students to learn the knowledge and skills necessary for collaborative working. So moving on then to planning the IP um, at the ICF. So planning is fundamental and key to practice-based IPE because these placements, um, so for students from health professions, roughly speaking, half of their education might be geared towards the classroom and half might happen in, in the clinical setting as part of their clinical placements. So placements are typically, or have been uni professionals. So practice-based IP, they're students from two or more professions. So there's additional planning in relation to having students from more professions. There's also additional planning in relation to the supervision that these students will get. They will need supervision for their own discipline, but also into professional. So IP planning research um, from Cook and Kilminster identified this planning is necessary to establish support, to overcome timetabling challenges and to, to design and implement IP. So critical to IP is getting educators from different health professions to work together. So before our placements, I organised pre-placement meetings with the practice tutors from speech and language therapy, occupational therapy, uh, human nutrition, dietetics, physiotherapy, that uh, so well supported the UL students at the ICF. So at these meetings, we discussed plans for our interprofessional supervision. So I provided IP tutorials to the students. We also talked about the profession specific supervision the students would get. We talked about our communication approaches and the IP activities. So Arlene in the previous presentation talked about establishing an active learning environment. So active learning environments support IP, support, support the goal of IP because they increase understanding and they build into professional relationships. So research shows that if IP is to be effective, we need interaction between students. We need to use principles of adult learning and these learning methods then reflect real world practice. Sorry, just take a drink. Importantly also, the learning activities must be linked to expected outcomes and assessment. In the picture here, you have the UL students, and this is when they were giving interprofessional uh, case study presentations to the ICF, excuse me, to the ICF care team as part of their placement. Mm. Now, so interestingly, what students identified as important for, the, for them within IP is that they understand roles, that they work with patients, that they develop clinical skills, and that they receive feedback. Another, <coughs> excuse me, another key point for IP is that we must design IP so that it utilizes all professions because this shared learning first needs to be meaningful. 
So a last point in relation to establishing an active learning environment, um, the IP activities we selected were interprofessional case-based discussion, interprofessional client management, <coughs> excuse me, professional observation and collaborative review of team interactions. So these IP activities um, involved the students talking to each other and identifying shared patients that they had so that they could uh, devise a collaborative approach to that patient's care. So interestingly, research from Australia has shown that personal relationships for, oh, the students reported as a part. Yeah. Ten minutes have gone, just so that, you know. That's perfect then. Um, so what this research found was that personal relationships form the basis for interprofessional relationships. This is what the students reported. So in our sessions, I used icebreakers with the students to get them, uh, I suppose, get them familiar with each other, develop these relationships. They spoke about, I suppose, where they went on their holidays the previous year. Very simple things to start the conversation. Um, research shows that professional cultures and stereotypes are the most common barriers to collaboration. So research shows that learning together can cultivate respect, trust, break down rivalries and prejudices. So just before I close, these are some of the responses to the, uh, <clears throat> the ICF. So the UL president, sorry, Professor Kirsten May. Uh, so what Professor Kirsten May said, the ICF at UL was an example of a very collaborative multi-organizational solution to serve our community at an anxious and difficult time. Our students in many health disciplines had opportunities to experience excellent practice-based education and interprofessional collaboration at the facility and to be involved in giving care to patients with complex needs. <clears throat> So Tom, an ICF patient, he said he was well looked after by the wonderful doctors and he said he'd been through loads in the past few weeks, but I always tried to stay positive. Only for the staff here, I wouldn't be able to get around at all. And with the physio and exercise to do with me, I'm getting around fairly well now. Finally, then the student voice, which is so important, Cormac, a physiotherapy student. He said, I found the IP sessions very beneficial for my learning as they allowed me to develop new rapports with other health professions and make the patient experience as holistic as possible. Marguerite said she felt it was a fantastic idea and ensured that all of the students had the ability to work and communicate as part of a multidisciplinary team and take into consideration each other's roles in the care and treatment of patients. And then Ashley felt that the collaborative assignments each week encouraged students of different health disciplines to work closely together and communicate with one another. So finally, a research study into the ICF is being conducted by Dr. Judy Pettigrew, in the, who is an associate professor in OT at the UL School of Allied Health. So we've talked about the background, context for IP, planning IP and establishing an early learning environment. And then we've looked at inspirations in learning and teaching. So just to close, I want to thank everyone who supported IP at the ICF. And I think this quote captures the sentiment <clears throat> which is ultimately the greatest lesson that COVID-19 can teach humanity is that we are all in this together. Uh, here are my references. Thank you all very much for your attention. Apologies for my croaky voice this morning uh, just at the end, but if anyone would like to get in touch with me at any stage to discuss anything further, I would be delighted uh, to talk with you about that and thank you all very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you for the lovely presentation. Uh, we can stop the recording for that one. Thank you, Rose.